I do not like throwing videos together, but here I am without my green screen up. <laughs> I have been having a rough couple of months. Um, not like physically rough, but like mentally exhausting, you know. Um, this month, um, my video is late and it's just one video. <laughs> So I am just going to be doing my wrap up and my reviews all in one video and kind of going with that. I am hoping for a major turnaround in the month of November that should get me back on track, but I'm not going to speak too soon. So let's just figure out what it is I have going on. As far as my Goodreads challenge goes, I'm way behind on it. It's still possible to get caught up. I just don't know if I want to at this point. <laughs> um, I have read 39 books towards my total goal of 60. I am eight books behind as far as trying to be on track with meeting that goal. Um, so I'm only at 65% right now. Um, again, it is completely doable, but it is, you know, halfway through the month of October and I'm currently not reading anything. Um, I mean, I'm doing my daily devotional, but those take like five minutes. So um, I really think I'm in like a reading rut. So I'm going to pick out something that's completely different that I haven't, you know, read in a while and maybe read that. I'm even going to kind of abandon um, the book club um, list that I have right now. I'm still promoting the book club and all of that, but um, I know one of the books we're reading right now, I've already read. So I don't feel pressure to read that book again. And the other book, it looks like a really good reference book, but I'm going to put that one to the back burner as well. And I'm going to try to read something that's going to rejuvenate my love for reading because my brain has just been like so just just crashed lately. <laughs> um, so let's see what I actually read in the month of September. All right. So for the month of September, there were actually four books that I, you know, picked up attempting to read. I did complete three of them. One of them I did not finish. And this is your standard DNF in the sense that I will never go back and finish this book. I just don't think this was the right time for me to read that book. So I will explain that more when I get to the review. It's not really a real review. And I did not give it a star rating. So I'm going to get to that in just a moment. So the first thing I want to do is talk about um, the first book that I actually finished in the month of July. I'm not, see, I am so out of it, guys, in the month of September, um, was called Dragonfly Summer. And this is a book from one of my favorite authors. She writes um, dark, like paranormal stories, and she writes, um, horror and she's got a wonderful series that I am crazy about so this was I think a standalone book that was released only as an audiobook that they recently released or or it's in pre-order right now for um I believe ebook and print and so this one is darker than I had expected so let me just get into my review of Dragonfly Summer on Goodreads it has an overall star rating of five um, but let me look at, get into my review. It says actual rating 4.5. The main reason I applied this rating is due to feeling as though the blurb didn't fully prepare me for what I was about to read. I think I would have also, it would have also benefited from a trigger warning, but I know some people don't like those. This is an excellently scary book in so many ways. Plus, I love when I don't figure out everything before the big reveal. This author's talent for twisting a tale is more evident in this book than any of her other than any of her other stories, and I've read and admired almost all of them. Um, this is probably the darkest tale I've read from this author, and that's um, taking the restoration into account. When I read her book, The Restoration, I thought that was the darkest thing she had written. And I think this was actually written before The Restoration, so I'm playing catch up. So let me get back to it. Um, this story is steeped in relatability, even with the subtle paranormal elements. By the end of the story, 
and almost feel like the paranormal elements were slightly imagined, which makes all of the creepy stuff even more creepy. It's one thing for a ghost to haunt you. It's another for a real person to hunt you. This is um, a very mature book, best for adults. The language and content may not be suitable for some teens, but I always leave it up to the individuals and their parents to determine. While there is some strong language, it serves a purpose. I don't want to give spoilers, but, so that's just my spoiler warning. If you look at the review on Goodreads, it has spoiler, it's hidden. If you want to see that spoiler, you can click on it. If you don't, you can read past it. So this is fair warning that I am getting ready to read the spoiler now. It says trigger warning. There is a very detailed and graphic depiction of rape in this story. Um, there are a few instances of graphic sexual assault references before and after the major scene. I was disappointed in the way other characters glossed over the idea of the one character being raped simply because she was known as being widely sexually active. There seemed to be no sympathy for the damage caused by the rape and all of the focus was on whether or not she was dead. So I'm not going to go too much more into that just because that was kind of a spoiler. And if I explain that even more, that'll be even more of a spoiler. So going back to the rest of the review, which I was not prepared to read. I, I almost gave this book a lower rating because of that. But ultimately, this is a really good book and an engaging story. I simply wish I had known what kind of content I'd encounter going in so it wouldn't have been so shocking to me. There are other um, strong, intense themes um, present throughout this book that may serve as trigger, um, triggering depictions um, to other readers, such as domestic abuse and violence, um, abuse enabling, um, substance abuse, parental neglect, body shaming, slut shaming, obsessive behaviors, stalking, mental health, mental health treatment controversies, and intense apathy. So there's a lot going on in this book. Um, I had mixed feelings about the way in which one particular mental health treatment was depicted. Um, I fe it felt out of character for this author to pick such a strong one-sided approach. I was expecting there to be more debate or conflict about the validity of the treatment without there ever being a consensus as to whether the reader was supposed to be for or against it, but it seemed that the author wanted the reader to feel a very specific way about this treatment. It just seemed odd to me. I feel like this author does a really good job of usually being like neutral about things, but it just didn't, this one didn't feel neutral. Now, I'm not saying that I'm for or against it, but just when I was reading it, I really felt like the author was hitting home like a certain point. And I don't feel like this author usually does that kind of thing, but I don't know, maybe I was reading too much into it. I just was expecting there to be more of a back and forth about whether or not this treatment was good or bad when they were just picking kind of one stance. Lastly, um, I was a bit put off by the fact that I never really grew to like any of the characters in this book. I was starting to like the jock character, that's me trying not to give more spoilers, but based on how he reacted to what I wrote in the spoiler, I didn't really care for him either. Joe was okay, but not really someone I could imagine being long-term friends with. Um, I think we could be good casual acquaintances. Overall, if you like being scared, this is the book to read. Highly recommended to adult readers of thriller and horror, strong female characters, and small town mysteries. Be aware of triggering content. So that was my review for um, Dragonfly Summer. It uh, was not what I expected, but still really good. And once I got past some of the triggering content, once I was aware, okay, that's what's going to be in this book, I could ground myself and get through the rest of the story. I do think I personally would have benefited from knowing that that was going to be in there ahead of time. I probably would have given it a five star if I had known going into it what to expect, but it was really jarring for me not expecting that and then having that appear. So the next thing that I 
picked up planning to read but didn't finish was actually one of the IWSG book club reads for the um, month of September. And this was also my um, read with Faye challenge book for the month of September. So I guess I didn't um, do well with my read with Faye challenge um, for this month. Uh, let's see here. It was Story Genius. And this is unrated because I did not finish it. Um, this is not my standard DNF because this is a book that I would probably like to go back and finish, but it was just really hard for me to get through it. And here's the actual review, even though it's, like I said, I haven't rated it and I've DNF'd it. I love the concept of a blueprint, but this is way too ready. <laughs> I love it when I flub my own words. Okay, let's rewind that, try again. I love the concept of a blueprint, but this is way too wordy for me to read right now. Probably great for new writers, but um, veteran writers need to be in just the right mental place to read this. I will revisit this at another time. I got 61% through, no rating at this time. So I got pretty far through the book, but it took me way longer to read what I did read. Like, I'm not a speed reader, but I also don't read super slow. And I feel like it took me forever just to get 61% through it. And it's not that the content wasn't good. It was, it was just for me really wordy and I want to finish it so that I can compile all of my thoughts and give like a real review later on, but that's just not going to happen right now. So the next thing I read in the month of September was actually a book that I was supposed to have read in August. <laughs> so this was the IWSG book club book for the month of August. It was supposed to be my read with Faye challenge for the month of August. So at least I got through the month of September with this. It was a really short read. Um, it was just one of those things that life got in the way. And that's the only reason why it took me as long as it did to read this book. I mean, you could literally sit down and read this book in one day if you just sat down and did it, but I had a lot going on. So let's talk about Still Like an Artist. On Goodreads, it has an overall star rating of four. And here is my review. Uh, this was an IWSG book club book that I missed originally and went back to read. I am also counting this as towards my Read with Fate challenge. This is a short and to the point book with some cool illustrations slash pop art images to help um, hone and develop a creative path that works for you. It's not rocket science, but it's actually helpful. I wouldn't mind having a few t-shirts made out of some of the helpful tips. Recommend it to all kinds of creatives at various stages of their creative journey. So I think this is just a really good book that if you are having some type of creative pursuit, you should read this at some point in your creative journey. I think earlier is better than later, but I've been doing this for, I'm not going to say how long, but 10 plus years. And I thought it was really insightful and it was short and to the point, not wordy. All right. And the last thing that I picked up and actually completed in the month of September was something that I picked up because clearly I've been going through like a reading rut and I wanted to read something that was a little bit more lighter. I've been reading a lot of hard hitting stuff, a lot of nonfiction as well. And so um, I started this series earlier in the year because it was an IWSG book club read. And, but this is a sequel to a book that I thought was hilarious then and I was willing to give it a go now. And so here we go. Revenge of the Space, Revenge of the Space Surfing Boat Monkeys. This is <laughs> Gale Harbor book two. And um, on Goodreads, it has an overall star rating of five. And this one is actually very short, but I think thorough review. Here we go. I needed something fun to read and this hit the spot. An excellent sequel to the first book and I feel a third one coming on, which I'm totally down for. This book um, has made a clean transition from middle grade to YA by the end. So I'm thinking whatever comes next may have a slightly more mature yet laid back feel, but I'm just speculating. 
as far as this book, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I love these characters, even when they aren't at their best. The humor in this book is perfectly balanced with the serious elements that inevitably happen due to the nature of these adventures. This ending is a bit darker than the first book, but like I said, I feel like a third book is coming. Highly recommended to fans of humorous, dark fantasy, sci-fi, suitable for kids, teens, and adults. So this was just a really fun read. The first book was kind of clearly, you know, middle grade. This one kind of helps that transition to where it was kind of middle grade at the beginning, YA by the end. And I think the next book, um, if there is one, which there should totally be, um, this is the second book. It, there, This should at least be a trilogy. Could be more. But I definitely feel like the next one is going to have a more YA feel to it. As long as it's still hilarious and relatively clean, I'm down for it. And yeah, that is what I read in September. Like I said, my October reading is non-existent right now other than my devotional. But I am hoping to look through the thousands of books that I have access to and find something to just kind of break this rut that I'm in and just pick up something and just enjoy it. Not wearing so worrying so much about lists and rankings and things like that. Just, you know, try to enjoy something and hopefully some changes that I feel coming along, if they actually come along the way they're supposed to in November, I'll be more of me and I'll be able to be on top of things better. So let me know what you guys think about some of the things I read. Let me know what you're reading. And as always, guys, stay safe, blessed. I'll talk to you next time.